I'd like to be able to exist in peace. Um, I would love that for all LGBTQ plus people. And yes, just the opportunity to just be ourselves no matter what neighborhood we're in. My name is LaRonda Frost. I'm a mobile engineering team lead, and my pronouns are she, her, and hers. I build apps that you may use on your mobile phone. I identify as a lesbian. People put me in the STEM category in between uh, stud and feminine. I grew up in rural Arkansas, pretty much a farm town. We had about 2,300 people. I grew up fairly I would say poor, grew up in a single parent household. There wasn't a lot, of, lot to do in Arkansas, wasn't exposed to a lot. So definitely growing up, I just day dreamed about, you know, traveling and maybe, you know, visiting New York. I had an aunt from New York. Um, I didn't fly until I was an adult. Like our family took probably three or four vacations, you know, my whole childhood. I definitely grew up pretty, sheltered from a lot of things or wasn't aware of any you know local gay organizations or gay communities or anything like that yeah i absolutely had some some role models uh, my mom i admired what she was doing in our local community she was one of my biggest role models um also a few other members of my family I have a cousin like i grew up in a family of very strong women you know, I think about them when I need courage to do something big, like move across the country. Being gay or being a lesbian was something that I felt was a sin, just how I grew up in the Christian church. I didn't know of any other, you know, gays or lesbians in the community to serve as an example. I just knew it was a sinful thing. So I saw myself, you know, having, I guess, attraction to um, women, probably in my early teens, it was pretty strong. It wasn't until I became, you know, later in college that I decided to date women and just start exploring what the gay community was like. My college was trying to launch a LGBTQ program. So that was my first experience. I went to a meeting, there was like two other people there. <laughs> So from there, I didn't, I think I went to maybe one other meeting. There wasn't a lot going on and I was about to graduate soon anyway. But that was the first time I kind of had that community. And then I went to Chicago and ended up living in like the Andersonville area, which was a gay area for women at the time. When I got to Chicago, I had a lot of problems. I realized that I couldn't drive well. I wasn't used to, you know, all the street lights and, and whatnot. And it was overwhelming. I actually went to therapy for anxiety for a little while just to kind of, you know, get used to the, the changes. But I did make some friends, went to a lot of different, you know, gay organizations. Uh, one of them I really loved was called Pow Wow. It was this gay uh, black poetry night um, on the South Side, like deep in the, I want to say hood. Uh, <laughs> but it was a, it was a really good community and I made some friends from there and just had a a couple of my friends or families kind of adopted me, you know, showed me the ropes of Chicago and everything. So that was cool. You had to learn how to drive in the snow and Oh my shovel gosh, the shovel the car out. <laughs> yes, drive in the snow. How do you maneuver with buses? My first exposure to coding, I was a kid and uh, one of my mom's friends was babysitting me and they had this tablet that had the basic programming language on it and it came with a book. So it was my first time teaching myself coding. And my mom took, I believe it was statistics class when I was growing up and I went with her to school. I guess she maybe didn't have a babysitter, but I did learn a lot in there. Like how they did the formulas was how you write, you know, the math formulas and code. So as a kid, I had a couple of those opportunities and it still didn't stick with me or I wasn't aware that you could, you know, be a computer scientist. It wasn't something I thought about when I first entered college. 
I was an accounting major, and one of my professors posted a job for updating the department websites, the business department's websites. And I got excited about that because I was working in you know, Burger King at the time and wanted to work in an office. So I applied for the position. No one else had applied for it and got the job. And he gave me some books to learn how to do web development. And I learned it, learned about JavaScript. And then he told me since I picked up uh, updating the website so quickly and he let me know about some internships doing software development that the college had and talked to me about switching majors and I did. I got a couple internships and a couple job offers, got a job offer to go to Chicago, that's how I ended up there and you know, the rest is history I guess. <laughs> That's really impressive. Like you had somebody who like gave you the books and stuff, but at the end of the day, you kind of learned how to code JavaScript on your own, which is incredible. Yeah, I had to learn a lot in my own because I was so far in my, like I was a junior by the time I really got into uh, the computer field and hadn't had much exposure to it. So I definitely had to learn a lot. And I think that's key to being successful in tech is just being able to teach yourself. I've had to code and probably eight or so languages now. And you don't always have time to register for a class, so you really need to learn on your own, get comfortable with that. Do you feel like the fact that like there are tools to learn on your own, and a lot of the times it seems like in the tech industry, like they're really more concerned about your ability to do it than kind of your, maybe that like your degree or something like that. Do you feel like it kind of makes it a more accessible space for maybe LGBTQ people or? Absolutely. I think it's very um, accessible to LGBTQ people, other minority groups. I mean, just going to YouTube, I've, I've taken free classes online, Coursera, there's Udemy. You can take your first class, and I think it's usually under 15 bucks. So, and then you can always download free, you know, PDFs and things online as well for whatever technology you're learning. They usually have their own docs. So, yeah, it's definitely very accessible uh, if you're disciplined and can interview, take tests well. I wouldn't say I felt truly supported until maybe the past decade or so. Programs started having more, or companies started having more ERG programs where they celebrated pride and so forth. Yeah, I, de I definitely didn't feel open the first few companies that I worked at, like, oh, I didn't feel open to be gay. And have you felt differently recently, like being out in the workplace? Do you feel like there's been space for you and you felt supported and everything? Absolutely. I feel like I went from being a pariah when I first started out. You know, people would find out I'm gay and then it was like, oh my God, or they're acting weird around me. But the last decade, I definitely felt celebrated. I've done a lot of interviews like this, you know, at companies and things and we've had a lot of pride of it. So now it's kind of the cool thing to be. <laughs> like I'm thinking about maybe LGBTQ people who are interested in coming into the workplace, but like maybe that like, why is a workplace with an ERG something maybe they should look for if they're looking to be affirmed and like what, what role has that played for you? I think looking at those types of programs are important because you are more likely to get allies, more likely to get people to take you under your wing. What I've noticed with mentoring, and mentoring is key, I think, for you to move up the corporate ladder faster, but it's easier to find a mentor and someone to take you under their wing if they have things in common with you, because they really have to like you as a person and relate to you as a person. And not to say that a company that isn't diverse wouldn't have people that could relate, but at least you know a company that has ERG programs has done some work and they, they kind of understand, you know, what some of the challenges are being a, you know, single, double, triple minority. So I do look for that in spaces and I always show up to my interviews as myself because I want them to know who they're hiring. I'm not going to switch it up once I get in there and watch them switch it up. So I think be yourself and see how they treat you, you know, when you show up for an interview from the HR people, the front door people, you know, those types of things. Like, do you feel welcomed? 
I think any career is easier if you have resources. You know, I've had parents pay me a ridiculous amount of money per hour to tutor their one child um, in coding. In those instances, you know, comparing that child to a child that didn't have those resources, of course, the child with the resources is going to have more opportunities. So I would say that is the biggest barrier, you know, exposure to the training, the tech jobs, people like me are some of the, the biggest challenges. Based on the role that STEAM work plays in kind of building society and everything, like thinking about the fact that like, you know, LGBTQ plus people and people with disabilities like interact with these things that we're building, like whether that's in kind of, I guess, the physical world or like virtually or whatnot. Like, why is it so important for LGBTQ plus people to be in that workforce as part of kind of creating these things and designing these things? I feel like there's so many different things to consider. And, you know, I work with kids and I see, you know, sometimes programming and different things are marketed to girls versus boys. And, you know, I think me and just not really fitting totally into a gender role. I think it's, I'm a benefit to the different teams I work on because I can kind of identify when we are going down a path of kind of a stereotype or just not considering the, the wide ranges of gender. And I make sure that we're not forcing, you know, pink on girls and blue on boys, you know. Girls and boys can like all the colors, no matter what their, their sexual orientation is. I wish we could have, and this is silly, but like pronouns on name tags. I think that's good. I think being able to be called by your nickname and have that on your ID is good. I work in an environment now where they don't, like you have to put your government legal name on your ID, which I understand, but it would be nice if there's some space for like what you go by. I think that I bring tenacity to the workplace. I think a lot of people who've gotten out of challenging, you know, childhood situations bring that tenacity that someone who had an easier life just doesn't have. I'm told that I operate pretty well under stress. And I always think that, you know, the type of stress that I get at the job isn't anything compared to the type of stress I, I've had to endure. You know, just based on my background, I know, you know, I work with a lot of exceptionally smart, educated folks, but we have to remember that a lot of people aren't literate we have to make sure that um, people with disabilities and things can use the tools that we're developing. So I think I can always bring that to the plate and just making sure that we're, you know, testing with a diverse group of folks and researching with a diverse group of users, not just, you know, each other. We're all in this similar kind of demographic. What's your favorite project that you've worked on and why? Definitely launching my own coding clubs. I got the opportunity to launch them the way I wanted to launch them. And I volunteered with a lot of other coding clubs and they were more, to me, they seem more focused on, you know, building something to present by the end of the, the workshop or whatever. They focus on fun, but the fundamentals to me and a lot of those programs weren't being taught that well. I had the opportunity to partner with schools and really focus on, you know, learning the computer science principles when I'm teaching the kids how to code. So, um, and we still keep it fun. So um, I launched a project during the pandemic. A lot of my volunteer opportunities dried up and I was just at home. And it was something that I thought about and a few people had encouraged me to start my own program because I was always volunteering for someone else's program. What inspired me to do it was, you know, just to comparing the, the students that I mentored in different organizations and, and different nonprofits. I was comparing them to some of the students that came from you know, well-off backgrounds that I had as, as interns on different jobs. And I saw like a huge skills gap. And I knew that some of the students that I worked with and some of the other volunteer programs, like they didn't have computer science programs in their schools. I know that that's changing now a lot, thankfully. Uh, more schools are requiring some computer science curriculum to graduate. 
I wanted to just keep the playing field more equal and also focus on early adoption. So I specialize in teaching um, elementary school students, exposing them to coding. And it's just impressive, you know, what the kids can learn. So they're learning, you know, physics principles because they're doing, you know, designing 2D video games and they're, you know, learning, you know, the X, Y plane and different things like before they learn this stuff in school. So, yeah, I'm pretty passionate about that. And yeah, we're still up and running. Um, I've been in five schools now in the L.A. area. I have a couple coding, um, summer coding programs going on right now. I would say the biggest challenges was learning how to run a nonprofit. So getting set up initially can take a bit of time and then fixing things if you didn't set up correctly can take a bit of time. So if you, you know, have a sponsor or have, you know, you can get someone on your board that has a legal background or has been at or has worked with another nonprofit. I think those are two big things. And finding some mentors that has helped me out a lot. I would say the, the work I've done uh, working with kids, I'm the most proud of. Um, working in gaming, that was exciting, not because of necessarily what I was doing. I'm not a big gamer, to be honest, but just to you know see the impact that it had on kids that I worked with. Like They were always excited that I worked in uh, video games. Uh, my main goal is to just grow my nonprofit be able to afford a full-time assistant <laughs> to help. Um, I'm doing a lot of the, the work myself, which is a bit challenging at times. If people are interested in learning more, where could they, where could they find out more about what you, what you offer? Uh, you can look us up online at frostequityinitiative.org. Do you have any other activities or hobbies that you do outside of running your nonprofit? That is a good question. I'm kind of boring, um, but I do like to hike. I do that a lot with friends. Um, and I also volunteer for my uh, neighborhood council. I like doing that, being in the community, doing things. I would tell my younger self to just enjoy life, um, do things that bring you joy. Um, I guess I have the, the same advice for any youth. Just figure out what you love in the field and just really immerse yourself in it. Um, if you can find mentors, definitely do your best to do that. Join any program, STEM programs that you know your school or local community may have and you know figure out what's going on in the field. You know, keep up to date with the changing technologies. Would you have any advice for people who are looking for a mentor, like maybe how to find one or how to identify who could be a, a good mentor for them? That's a good question. I think on your job, you know, if you're looking for a mentor at work, I think those are always good to have people who are seasoned, especially if you want to grow at the company. I would say talk to people who makes you feel uncomfortable, invite them out for coffee, you know, fill them out to see if there's someone that, you know, you really admire. On a, on a personal level that could probably give you some advice. See if they can, um, you know, relate to you, understand what you're going on or understand what you have going on. Um, there's a lot of different orga organizations out there. There's like Lesbians Who Tech and there's gay professionals out here. I've joined that organization. So be resourceful, see what organizations are in your community, join them and um, let them know what you're looking for.